Hey, it's Chronic in the Afternoon on Rock 104.5 Reno's Rock Station. I have Steven Jacobo here in the house. He's come all the way out from Gardnerville to tell us more about his Paralympic adaptive bobsledding dreams and how we can help make it happen. Let's start off a little bit about your injury. How did you get involved with the Paralympic team and what brought you to this point, I should say? I broke my back two and a half years ago at Sierra Tahoe Resort. Because I used to work there, too, as a chef. You know, working there, we do get a free season pass. So I figured while I work there, I might as well learn how to snowboard. Mm -hmm. So I was snowboarding for about three months. And it was February 26, 2013, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, getting ready to go home. We all decided just to take one more run. And it was a run I've never personally gone down before. It was more of a more advanced run. Probably about the halfway point um, where I started picking up more speed. You know, more jumps and tabletops are coming up. I reached this point where there's this 15-foot jump on the left side and there's a big tabletop on the right-hand side. And I didn't really have any room to go around it because there was trees. So I picked the jump thinking I was just going to coast off it and land flat. Well, obviously that didn't go very well because as soon as I went off it, and this was during the time where it was like really sunny and it was like really icy. So there wasn't... It wasn't soft. Yeah, it was like landing on ice. So mm -hmm. as soon as I went off the jump, it just shot me completely upside down. And it's like, you know how people say when something's bad's about to happen, everything slows down? Well, that's exactly what happened. I mean, I'm sure the whole thing happened within a couple seconds, but... Uh, all I remember, I remember the whole thing, but I just remember getting shot upside down and everything went slow motion. I remember looking at my friends on top of the mountain. I'm thinking to myself, too, this is not going to end up well at all. I hit the ground. My snowboard hits me in the face, kind of gushed my nose open a little bit, bleeding from that. And as soon as I hit the ground, I mean, it was the worst pain I ever felt in my life. I still remember how bad, how bad it felt. All I remember was trying to gasp for air, just making all these weird groaning noises just because of the pain and not being able to breathe. And I'm just tumbling down the mountain. Eventually, when I stop, literally like a few seconds later, one of my buddies, he held my neck and told me not to move. I remember the ski patrol getting there. They cut off all my, they cut off my jacket just to see if there's anything wrong with me. I remember laying there and not being able to, well, my legs, I was able to move my legs before and after my surgery. So they put me on the sled, took me all the way down to the bottom of the hill so that way I can get on the helicopter. They load me up on the helicopter, they stick me with IVs, morphine, they take me all the way, all the way to Renown and here in Reno. And um, I didn't have my surgery till the next morning. It was weird, though, because I woke up the next morning in the hospital not even knowing really what happened. I had to, like, give myself a few minutes to realize the shock of it. Hospital, yeah. uh -huh. And I had my surgery that following morning. I was even able to move my legs after the surgery, too. I was in the hospital for a month. And a week while I was there, my legs started getting weaker and weaker to the point where I couldn't move them anymore. Um, my surgeon told me I'd be walking out of the hospital, but that obviously didn't happen after being there for a month. I even uh -huh. did therapy for the last two weeks I was there. So then I got transferred to Ranchos Los Amigos in Downing, California. I was there for three weeks. You know, they're trying to teach you how to do things in your wheelchair, just, you know, things as a paraplegic, because it's all new stuff to you. Uh -huh. Two of the doctors told me there I'll never walk again either. The part that sucked about it is I was standing in a stand-up frame during therapy, and one of the doctors came to me and told me I would never walk again while I was standing up, so that kind of hit me pretty hard. Wow, what'd you do after that? I stayed out in California for about another six months, um, but those six months were probably like the hardest time for me because I was just hoping that I would walk again. Every day, I would just lay in bed, look at my legs, and just try and move them. But still, like, nothing ever happened. I was, like, I was really depressed, and I didn't want to go out in public or anything because I was just embarrassed in a way. Eventually, I moved back out here to Garnerville. Um, I also saw a fourth doctor out here. He was probably the best one I saw. He actually did more x-rays on my spine, and he told me that the reason why I wasn't walking again is because my nerves were so badly damaged that eventually they just died off. Mm -hmm. So I smashed my spinal cord in half. I'm a T9, T10, a complete paraplegic. with was a pretty low injury, which is pretty good for me. I still have all my upper body strength. I just can't mm -hmm. move my legs at all. Mm -hmm. I got two rods, eight screws, and a fusion in my spine. So eventually... I felt like I just kind of wanted to move in with, move on with my life after I hit my year mark. I started watching YouTube videos on other paraplegics doing what they do in wheelchairs, so that kind of motiv motivated me to go out there and start doing my own thing and just 
you know, move on with life. I started making my own YouTube videos and how I do things as a paraplegic. I first started out, like, cleaning the house, taking care of my kids, you know, just going out in public, doing everyday activities. And eventually I started getting into sports, like hand cycling. So I uh, got a hand cycle for a bit. I was only on the hand cycle for six hours until I competed in my first race out here in Reno. And then I got into do wheelchair skating, WCMX, made by Box Wheelchairs. Actually, that's the chair I have now. Altogether, it's almost $5,000. It's got suspension, and it's built to be thrown around. Mm -hmm. And I got into that for a while. It's a lot of fun. But yeah, my mom, she told me that she thought I was crazy at first because obviously what happened and then going to the skate park in your wheelchair. Jumping right back into the adrenaline junkie. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> what are you thinking? And she hated it, but I mean, I still did it anyway, so eventually she just kind of let me do it and not, you know, let it get her down. So I did that for a while, and then I got noticed on Facebook from the guy that started the U.S. Adaptive Bobsled team. Mm -hmm. um, he's actually the one, the first paraplegic to even do adaptive bobsledding. So he even came up with the whole entire sport himself. That's awesome. So he found me on Facebook. He invited me to Canada to try out for the team. We did the train. We were out there for about three weeks, did some training. Uh, eventually, I did well enough to get on the U.S. team. And then after that, I got invited to Austria and Switzerland. It was a lot of fun. It was probably the most beautiful place I've ever been to. Really expensive, but it, I, the people out there are nice, and it's just a, like an adventure almost. Uh -huh. So I got invited out to Austria and Switzerland to compete in the first ever World Cup for Dr. Bob setting. We went to uh, Eagles Austria first. We were there for a few weeks and had our first World Cup there. Then from there, we went over to Switzerland and uh, St. Moritz, Switzerland. We were there for a few weeks, and then once the season was over, I came back home. Um, I got a job here.